Have you ever opened up your sewing machine accessories and noticed you have loads of different sewing feet but you don't know what they do? Hey guys, I'm Tammy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've got six different presser feet and I'm gonna show you how each one of them works. So I have the Brother sewing machine behind me. It's quite a innovative and expensive machine but it comes with different presser feet and when I first opened up the box and saw them all, I did get quite overwhelmed with what they do. So I thought I'd create a really simple and easy to understand video to help you understand what each each of them do so you can play around and feel more confident and comfortable using them. So this is my sewing machine right here and as you can see I've already got my normal one into the sewing machine. If I open this up this machine actually comes with all these different presser feet inside. I've just zoomed in but in here I keep a little brush to clean the sewing machine. I also have this screwdriver to help with things. It comes with a seam ripper in here and then I've also got all these different attachments for me to try. I'm going to go through all of these and show you how they work on this sewing machine. But in general, no matter what sewing machine you have, there'll be similar ones for your machine. So on my sewing machine, to get rid of the presser foot, there's actually a button back here that I have to press. And that's what releases the presser foot. As you can see, this is our standard presser foot and this is what we use for the majority of sewing. Most time I'm sewing, I'm always using this foot. It's called J on my piece. But as you can see, it's just nice and simple. And again, you use this on things like zigzag stitches, straight stitches, just any ordinary sewing. So for me to put the presser foot back on, I basically have to line it up underneath and then I actually have to press a button on my machine and it will lower this section down and clip it onto the presser foot. I'll show you how that works. And as you can see, it's lifted it up and now it's attached to the sewing machine. So I've got my standard presser foot on and I've got a piece of fabric just to show you how the normal one works in case you don't know how that does actually work. But it's really good for using straight stitches or zigzag stitches. So again, if I just go straight ahead and sew a normal seam, you can see how this works. So as you can see, it's sewn a nice normal straight seam and then I've also sewn a zigzag stitch using the standard presser foot and that's what it looks like. It's a nice easy foot to use that you're going to use the majority of time when you're sewing. Now the next foot I'm going to talk about is this one right here and this is what I use to sew a buttonhole. So as you can see, if I push this up and down, you can see that moves. But also up here, if I hold and pull this, you can see this also adjusts and this is where we put our button in. So I have a button right here and I will slide it into that bit and push this down so it's nice and tight. And now that's gonna automatically calculate how long our buttonhole needs to be for this button I've inserted. My sewing machine does automatic buttonhole so I'll show you how that works as well. So I've got my standard foot here. If I just press the button in the back to take it off, it's released it. And now I can put my other foot in for the buttonhole. And this little bar here is what's gonna go into this section. And then I press the button to release the lever. And you can see it's now in place. It kind of clicked in place. If I lift it up, you can see it's attached. I also have a little lever here and I need to pull it down and put it behind this little thing right here. I don't know what that's called, but it's a, it looks like a little latch and I, do, I need to put it behind that latch. Now on my sewing machine, I have an actual section for buttonhole stitches. So I can press this button and you can see all the different buttonholes that I can sew. I'm just gonna select a standard one, which is that one. And you can see it's now changed the buttonhole that it's gonna create. My machine also tells me I need the A foot, which is the one we've just inserted. So that's actually all we need to do to sew the buttonhole because this foot will already calculate the length it needs to be. What I'm gonna do is lift the presser foot up and I'm gonna put my fabric underneath. And all I have to do now is literally just press the pedal and it will start and stop when it's finished on its own. So as you can see, the buttonhole has been finished. It just stopped on its own, even though I was pressing on the pedal, which means it's done. I can now cut the threads and lift the presser foot up and the buttonhole has been made. 
So this is what that buttonhole looks like. It's really nice and neat. All you need to do now is just cut that open with either a seam ripper or you can just use one of those um, chisels. I just lift that back up, take this off, and then if I get my button out, you can see it's the perfect size for that buttonhole. And as you can see, that did that completely automatically, which is why I really like this machine. So I know buttonholes look scary, but when you have a machine like this that does it automatically, this foot is super easy to use and you get such a nice clean buttonhole at the end. So the next foot that I'm gonna talk about is this one right here. And this is actually used to sew buttons onto fabric. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see these little sliders and they actually open, they kind of move up and down. And that's where you're gonna slide your button into this foot and it makes it really easy to sew. So let me show you how that works. So on my sewing machine, before I do anything, I need to go down and actually find the button sewing section, which is this one right here. And you can see it's changed to button sewing and also it's telling me the foot that I need. So again, I'm just putting this foot onto the presser foot. So lining it up and then pressing the button and it's now clicked in place. I personally like to take a bit more thread and just move it to the back. And then I've got my piece of fabric and I'm gonna put that underneath. I've also got a smaller, easier button to work with because this only has two holes. You can use it to do four hole buttons, but for ease, I'm just gonna use a two hole one. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this button in between these little metal plates. So as you can see, the button is now in between those metal plates and I can now make the press foot go down. You wanna make sure that your needle is hitting at the correct point in between those two holes. You can just use the hand wheel and make sure. You can see it's actually not going through, so that means I need to move the button back a bit, like that. And if I just double check, now it's going through. So I'm just gonna use my foot pedal to sew the button on. Now you don't wanna cut the threads on your machine. You basically wanna lift the presser foot up, make sure the needle's up, and then you wanna slide this out. And now the button has been sewn. So I'm gonna cut the threads off. But you can see the button has been sewn to the fabric. I would have pulled the thread to the back and tied a knot and then cut the threads off. I just did this to show you, but you can see it's nicely attached to the fabric and I really like how this foot actually works. So the next foot I'm gonna show you is this one right here and this is actually called the overcast foot. And this is really useful if you don't have an overlocker and you wanna neaten the raw edges of your fabric. So you can see it has a little edge right here and that's where we're gonna align the edge of our fabric. And as it sews in the sewing machine, it's gonna mimic an overlocking stitch. When it comes to these feet, you know it's the right way round if you can read the text correctly. So that's G, so I know that's the right way round. If I did it that way, you can see the text is upside down. So it needs to be the right way round. So I've got my fabric and I've put the edge of the fabric up against the edge of the foot right there. And I need to change my stitch to an overlocking stitch. So on my machine, there's lots of different stitches for me to choose. If I just press this one, you can see it's changed to overcast stitch here. And you can see there's lots of different other overcasting stitches. It's completely up to you which one you use. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a simple one, which is this one. So again, it's gonna sew an overlocking stitch at the edge of the fabric to neaten it. So this is what that stitch has sewn. I kind of went a bit crazy here. I was trying to play with the camera to try and zoom in, but this is what that looks like and it's got the overcast stitch along the edge. And again, this is to help prevent the fabric from fraying. This is a linen fabric, so naturally it's gonna fray quite a bit. But if you don't have an overlocker, this is a really handy foot to use. I can show you what another one looks like as well. So this is what the second one looks like. It's a bit more of like a cross kind of stitch rather than a V stitch. And that's what that looks like. Again, it is a linen fabric, so it's gonna fray a lot 
Personally, I still like to use an overlocker instead of using a foot like this because it kind of really encapsulates the raw edge. But again, if you don't have one, this is a really great one, especially if you're using fabric like cotton that doesn't fray as much. So the next foot I'm gonna show you is this one right here. And this is actually known as a monogramming foot. So you can use it to do embroidery or monogram names and phrases on your sewing machine. I'll show you how that works in a moment. But you can see this front bit is plastic and that just makes it really easy to see what's going on. It's also wider, so you can do more names and things like that that's kind of wider than a normal stitch because obviously characters and letters are wider than like a normal zigzag stitch. So up here I have a section called Character Decorative Stitch and if I press that button, I've got all these different embroidery stitches I can use and one of them is here, which is where I can actually type in characters names and phrases for me to use. So I'm going to use a cursive one and I might write something like my name, Tammy, and you can see it's put that up over here and it's told me I need the N foot as well, which is what we've got in our hand. And then again over here I'm going to take the old one off, I'm going to put the monogramming foot on, and I've got a spare piece of fabric and I can just start sewing. So I need to put the presser foot down and it will just now sew the word Tammy if I just press the foot pedal. So the stitch has actually stopped on its own. I'm going to lift the needle up. I'm also going to cut the thread. And if I lift the presser foot up and take this out, you can see it's sewn my name and embroidered it really nicely. For some reason, the T is really far over, but I really love how that looks. I absolutely love the stitching detail. That's from the front and then the back looks like that. So you can see it's really nicely done. And that's what the monogramming foot is for. I absolutely love that stitching detail. It's so pretty. And this would just make really cute personalized gifts. So the last one I'm gonna talk about is this one right here. And this is the invisible zipper foot. And this is what you use when you're sewing invisible zippers. Or basically you just wanna sew really close to the edge of the zipper teeth and just sew a really nice clean zip. So I have an invisible zipper right here. And I'm gonna show you how I would use the zipper foot to sew that. Now, depending on what side of the zipper you're sewing will depend if you're gonna put it in the left or the right one. So I've got my piece of fabric here and I'm gonna align the zipper to this edge. And this is the perfect side for the zipper foot being on the left to sew really close to this line right here. So again, I'm gonna put the zipper foot down and as I'm sewing, I'm actually going to spread the zipper teeth open and it will sew really close to the edge. Now I'm gonna move the zipper foot to the other side. And I've got another piece of fabric and the other side of the zipper and I'm just gonna push that to the edge like so. And in the same way, I'm gonna sew really close to this edge, like that. And again, I'm gonna spread the zipper open as I'm sewing it. So I've sewn both sides, if I just do the zipper up, you can see I've sewn the both sides to the zipper. So of course, when you're sewing this properly, you wanna make sure you're aligning the end of the zipper with where you want it to start and stop. I've just used two random bits of fabric to show you how this actually works. If I zoom in, you can see I haven't gone all the way to the zipper edge on this side. This side I've done a pretty good job, but the right side, there's a bit of a gap and you can always go in and just go even closer to get a really invisible look. You don't wanna to go too close that you end up catching the fabric when you move the zipper up and down. But again, it takes a lot of practice. And as you can see, this one did turn out really nicely. I would just say this one needs a bit more 
closer to a zipper teeth. So that is six different sewing machine feet and how you can use them. They definitely are a lot easier than you think to try. It just takes a bit of practice to get them right. If I had to pick my all time favorite, I think it would be the automatic buttonhole foot because it's just so easy to sew buttonholes that way. And it just takes a lot of the guesswork out. So I know they're gonna turn out really well at the end. I also hadn't tried the button sewing foot until this week. I don't know why it took me so long to try. Normally I just hand sew buttons on. But after trying that one, I really like how that works. And I think it'll be much easier to sew buttons on, especially if you're sewing, I don't know, 10 or 12 at once. Definitely let me know down in the comments which one of these was your favorite. And if any of these took you by surprise, I'd love to know any ones as well that you would recommend for me to try. I do have a blind hem foot and I didn't specifically use that one because I don't ever really have to sew a blind hem but maybe in the next video I can try that out and see how that works. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.